There's someone in my extended family who just found out a few days ago that I was an atheist, and I'm not sure how this got past her. It's not exactly like I'm shy about it. But she said, well, just so you know, from now on, I'll be praying for you. And I said very pleasantly, well, you know, as an atheist, I don't think that praying does any good at all. But what harm can it do? So thank you for the thought, for the sentiment, and, uh, you know, best of luck. But of course, that's what I said to her isn't entirely true. Uh, for something like that situation where you're praying for another person, I would say prayer doesn't hurt because it has no effect at all. She can pray for me all she wants. I don't know the difference. I, she may be praying for me at this very moment. I have no way of knowing. I'm completely oblivious to the process. But there are times when prayer can actually be a harmful thing and I have witnessed that this past week uh, March 18th 2011 is when I'm taping this and in the past week I've seen some of the clearest examples of my life of how prayer can be a dangerous thing and a destructive thing when employed in the wrong way uh, just recently, of course, there was the, the terrible earthquake in Japan uh, where hundreds of thousands of people were displaced and as many as 10,000 may have died. And they're still uh, digging out over there. there. There are still medical teams on their way into Japan. There are people still trying to sort their lives out and, and try to put something back together from all that destruction. And on Facebook, there were just countless messages from people, status updates, saying, you know, pray for Japan, pray for Japan. A few days ago, there was even uh, an organized sort of global prayer circle for Japan, uh, where everybody was supposed to get together at 5 p.m., uh, I presume Eastern time, I don't know, and, uh, and, and, and pray or send positive energy, or it was, it was very non-denominational, very non-sectarian. Whatever you believe in, whatever your spirituality is, send something positive toward Japan. And that really, really got on my nerves. Not, 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 not because I'm not religious, but because it seemed to me that these people who are praying for the Japanese, for the victims of the quake, really do want to help. You know, the, 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 the impulse to, to pray for those suffering people is a good thing. They, 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 these people seem to really want to help. It's not bad. It's, it's not a bad impulse. But they're just not acting on it. And that's the thing that's, that, that, that frustrates me so much about people who say, oh, well, you know, like, uh, oh, the, there's a terrible tsunami in Indonesia. 200,000 people are dead. You know, there's been a terrible earthquake in Haiti. Hundreds of thousands of people are dead. The, the entire country has been knocked flat. Oh, there's a terrible earthquake in Japan. There may be 10,000 dead people in Japan right now. Let's pray for them. If every person who prayed for the victims of Japan would just donate $25 to the Red Cross or Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders. I like to say the French version because it makes me sound smart. There would be, there would be no need. These people would be already taken care of. There, there, there would be sufficient resources available right now to see to all of their needs, to solve all of their immediate problems, to set them up in temporary shelters, to see to their medical care, to reimburse them for their losses. If everybody who prayed would actually do something to help, there would be no need for help. The problem would be solved instantaneously. But instead of actually doing something, people choose to pray. Now, if you don't feel moved or if you're unable for because of your current financial situation to to give a, a financial donation or you don't have time to volunteer for the red cross or to give blood or, or or whatever or if you just don't want to that's fine that's totally fine not everybody has to participate if you if you see the earthquake in japan and you're not moved by it at all and you just think ah who cares 
A little cold-blooded, but that's cool. You don't have to. You shouldn't be forced to, to have some sort of emotional reaction to something that, that you don't feel moved to have. That's, that's totally cool, but please, if you feel moved to help, help. Help for real. Give blood to the Red Cross. Donate money to the Red Cross or to Shelter Box or to Doctors Without Borders or, or some organization that is actually going in and providing relief to the victims of that tragedy. Don't just get on your knees and pray, all right? There are, there are two types of prayer. This is me talking. This is, this, is my own, this is my own thought, although I have borrowed it from Roger Ebert. Roger Ebert says there are two types of prayer. There's vertical prayer and there's horizontal prayer. I prefer to think of it as there's uh, private prayer and public prayer. Private prayer is when you talk to yourself, and public prayer is when you talk to yourself in front of other people or you listen to someone else talking to themselves in front of everybody. And these two types of prayer have one thing in common, and that is they do absolutely no good for anybody or anything all by themselves. Prayer is completely useless. It doesn't work. This, this, this is not an opinion. This is not a, a, a subject up for debate. Prayer does not work. It has been studied scientifically many times people who know they people who are suffering who have a disease or have cancer and know they are being prayed for tend to do a little bit better by a measure that is completely indistinguishable from the placebo effect perhaps because it is the placebo effect people who are being prayed for without their knowledge don't seem to do any better at all which is exactly what you would expect because there's nothing happening now there are friends of mine religious folks, mostly Christians, who, who will tell me that uh, as, as, as a non-believer I cannot possibly understand, I have not experienced it in my own life because I've shut myself off from God, and, but, but they have experienced the power of prayer. They have seen someone healed or they have been delivered from some terrible circumstance themselves by, by prayer, by the power of God focused on them through prayer. To those people I say this, if you truly believe that prayer works, that all you have to do is, is ask God for something and, and He will give it to you, then next time you're in church this Sunday, uh, when the pastor passes the collection plate around, you and try to get some of your friends involved in this too. Instead of putting a check or a $20 bill or however much you usually give in your church's collection, just write the pastor a little note and say, I've decided that I'm not going to support the church financially anymore. I'm just going to pray that God will sustain the church through his power and glory and love. See how long that lasts. See if, if do you honestly, what do you think your pastor's reaction would be if he passed the collection plate around and instead of coming up with a couple of hundred bucks, he came up with a lot of promises from his flock to pray for the church and to ask God to take care of the church. What do you think would happen? When it comes time to pay the pastor's salary, when it comes time to put a new door on the church, when it comes time to buy a new organ for the choir, people in the church don't pray about it. They don't just get on their knees and ask God to provide whatever they need. They do something. They volunteer their time, they give their money, either in the collection or part of a fundraiser. They, they, they take concrete action to provide whatever the church needs. Because they know that that's the least that the church that they love deserves. And if you care about the people that have suffered in this earthquake, or in any other natural disaster, or in any other circumstance ever, if there are people suffering in your life that you know about, whether they're known to you personally or whether you just hear about them on the news, and you think that they deserve help, help them. Don't pray for them. Prayers do nobody any good. If you donate one dollar to the Red Cross today, if you go to the Red Cross website and just donate one dollar, you will be doing more good than if you and a billion of your friends sat down and prayed for those people for a week. Real people with real problems need real help. You wouldn't sit down and write a letter to Santa Claus 
to take care of the earthquake victims. So please don't waste your time or their time by getting on your knees and asking God to do something. Because I'll spoil it for you, he's not going to do anything. But you can. And if you, give, if you don't give a shit, then forget you ever watched this. I'm sorry I wasted your time. But if you do give a shit about those people, do something. 